the dust of Lord Krishna's lotus feet say that there is no real happiness in any other place. Sri Chaitanya Manu Bistam Stabitam Jena Bhutale Svayam Rupakana Mayam Tadati Sva Padanti Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Goda Bhakta Vinda These stories remind me a little bit of the Radha Krishna Lila. They are like extra stories, not there in the Srima Bhagavatam, but they are so delightfully involved with the stories of the Bhagavatam that you can hardly see any difference between them. And of course, there's many stories where certain auspicious women desire to have the conjugal relationship with the Supreme Lord and it was only granted to them when they came in Lord Krishna's pastimes. Before Lord Krishna's pastimes this was not available. So in one word or another Lord Krishna's pastimes opened the doors to confidential relationships with the Supreme Lord, something beyond imagination, and all <coughs> following in the sub, sub, in the in the path of the of the Braja Gopis. The Braja Gopis are the gurus for confidential service to Sri Krishna in Braj. And Sri Radhika is the queen of the Braja Gopis. So we are celebrating by reading the Garga Sankhita that the Eternal Lord is actually opening his arms towards every single soul who aspires for that company, who aspires for this divine association that is somehow other made possible in the infinite grace of the, the plan of Krishna. Now, to tell you the truth about all this subject, I cannot speak much because this is much beyond me. But, since we are coming to Gaur Mandala, we have heard that in the Srivas Angan, the devotees who were invited to the nightly dances of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were also being introduced to the Rasa Leela, the performance of the Lord in the spiritual world. In other words, the Srivas Angan nightly dances had a very close affinity or connection with this eternal dance of Radha Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Brahmunityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sri Gola Bhaktavinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. So Srila Prabhupada he taught us that we cannot approach Radha Krishna Lila without Mahaprabhu's Lila first. So it is this mystical place of Sri Mayapur, this absolutely extraordinary mystical place, which gives us access to Vrindavan. Even though we have been quite active and quite absorbed in doing some seva in Vrindavan, really it is Sri Gupta Vrindavan Mayapur which is opening the doors to this realm. Therefore, today, in this beginning session of our Gormandal Parikrama, we are praying 
to Lord Chaitanya. Please give us your grace that we may enter into the eternal service of the Supreme Lord. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, they are the life and soul of all the devotees in this age. Jaya Sachinandan Jaya Gorahari Vishnu Priya Pranadana Nadiya Bihari This dancer of Navadvip, <coughs> the eternal associates of Vishnu Priya, the son of Sachimata, he is Krishna himself coming to give his grace. And in the Chaitanya Upanishad, there are many uh, quotations telling us what are the divine plans of the Lord in this world and what is his divine position. So by this revelation, we can understand that Lord Krishna has come himself as Goranga Mahaprabhu and even high potentialized through his half Krishna, half Radha identity. So what is half Krishna, half Radha? We, we, we hear about Harihar, the Harihar Kshetra, uh, where the, the Lord is half Hari, half Shiva, no? But half Krishna and half Radha in one personality, this is almost an unthinkable divine reality. And Chaitanya Chaitamita has been written to give further light into this incredible identity. And our Guru Devatulananda, so dedicated and so auspicious, has translated Chaitanya Chaitamita and Chaitanya Bhagavat into the Spanish language. This is something also inimaginable that this poetic. Uh, work was done. Anybody who knows about literary uh, services, they know how complicated, how deep, how difficult it is to write one sentence about Krishna. Uh, what to speak about one article, what to speak about one book, what to speak about in poetry, and what, about, what to speak about getting it published also. <laughs> so all this magic mystery has manifested in South America. Why? Because Lord Chaitanya wanted these mysterious things to be revealed. That is why. That is why such an unbelievable, unbelievable thing actually has manifested. So we are thankful, very deeply thankful to all those devotees who are worshipping Lord Chaitanya and spreading Lord Chaitanya's name. All the holy stories from the Srimad Bhagavatam, like this one of the Pulinda woman, it's very surprising. Very surprising. The whole story is just surprising. No? But that's what our scriptures tell us. So we, we believe in mysterious India is very surprising. Uh, when you hear of Kumbha Mela, it's one thing. When you go and see it, then it's another thing. You go, wow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> the reality of the divine is manifest. So, thank you very much for being here. Welcome to Mayapur Dam. Our Janavi Kunja Godiamat is a little uh, nature hideout of Lord Chaitanya's plan and we hope that you are all very very happy here and learn a lot about Lord Chaitanya in this uh, Parikrama session or season of 1919. I myself uh, like almost stepping in a dream and I knew I had to come here to Mayapur this uh, Gopunima festival and have a happy to meet Madhusudamar, Swami Maharaj, Priyad Prati Maharaj here 
and my uh, god brother who I didn't even know that I had him and with Colombian Venezuelan background huh? so this is it is It is the Krishna dream, and all of Mayapur is a Krishna dream, and Navadvip as well. All the the the, the nine islands of Navadvip—they are also the Krishna dream. One story I like to share with you, even though I don't remember the details too well, but that was that Ganga Devi. She was a bit jealous of the Yamuna because even though she's the most holy river coming down from Goloka, from Krishna's, then when Lord Krishna appears in this world, he goes to Yamuna and bases in her. So then Ganga Devi said, what is this? Why am I ignored? This is not, I don't feel very happy about this. And then Lord Krishna, he said to Ganga Devi, you don't worry, later I will come in my most confidential form as Radha in Krishna in one, and I will be living on your banks and playing in your waters, and I will have all the, uh, all the joy to uh, to be in your company so this this way also ganga he is very special here ganga is very very wonderful but in mayapur ganga is becoming very happy because supreme lord is taking bath in her just before she goes to ganga saga and ends into the ocean here the lord himself swims in the ganga and enjoys his divine pastimes so all of you welcome to Mayapur <coughs> have a wonderful time here and learn a lot about the divine pastimes of Lord Chaitanya who's mercy personified <coughs> we cannot expect anything further more than Lord Chaitanya's grace and Lord Chaitanya He's the master of all divine servants. So he has started the Sankirtan movement to serve the entire world. Now you have to look him up, think about it. Lord Rama was great. He killed Ravana. He was great. He was a great king of Ayodhya. He saved many people in the jungles. He pleased Lord Hanuman. Lord Rama was great, great, great. Lord Krishna, he killed all the demons. He pleased all the gopas and gopis, braj gopis. He gave his Bhagavad Gita, a lesson which is nowadays by Lord Chaitanya's people spread around the world because previously to that, Lord Krishna's instructions, they were only known in India. They had not gone beyond the shores. So, Lord Krishna also very merciful <coughs> divine personality but then comes Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya from the very beginning he says this movement will be spread around the world and he gives orders and sends his disciples into all directions he himself travels throughout India And what else does Lord Chaitanya do? Even though he's born here in this little village, he gives to all of India and to all of the world Vrindavan Dham. He reveals Vrindavan Dham, which was otherwise lost in the jungles of the Mathura Buddhist government, which was there for thousands of years, the Buddhists were ruling. Uh, the Braj area, can you imagine Kali Yuga really, no? And then Lord Chaitanya comes and he just opens and he goes like, I don't know, he didn't have an army, he just came, he visited Braj once. Once. 
discovered the Radha Kunda and established, of course, his devotees worked very hard in Vrindavan. No? He sent his devotees and they established the glories of Braj Mandal. Not only Vrindavan, not only one place, the whole Braj Mandal. And Krishna Bhakti spread from there everywhere. So all the Swami Narayan people, Gujarat, the Pushti Margis, South India, everywhere like in Guru Vayur. Guru Vayur is definitely Krishna's, Krishna's tradition of the Krishna Seva. And everywhere, this was the power and that was the love and the potency which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said. I want the whole world to come in contact with Krishna. I am going to send Bhaktivedanta Swami to make a revolution around the world. And he is still in charge. You see, the plan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just in the initial stage to my humble appreciation. It's just beginning. And in such a marvelous way as he did, that he spread the Krishna called everywhere. Everywhere. People are now singing and dancing, having satsang, kirtan, melas, prasadam, everywhere. And the devotees, see the, the Mahaprabhu devotees, they are traveling everywhere as well. What more could we expect? What more could we desire? Just incredible. So therefore, Rupa Goswami says, Namo Mahavatandyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Goda Trishenama. You are the most magnanimous of all the avatars. No avatar ever has been as magnanimous, spreading Krishna Prema freely around the world. But how freely? Well, look at us. Aren't we the best example of how freely he distributed? <laughs> what, what more we need to say what more we have to aspire for to see. Hmm? Freely distributed. Such an unbelievable plan the Lord has made. So I pray as I have arrived now to uh, Gormandala. I pray for the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadada, Srivas, and all the other Gaudias, all the other Parshadas, and all the devotees who are living here today. I pray to all of them, please engage us in your divine service. Now, if you have any questions to this, any commentaries, come out. Give us what is your feeling. An avatar who wants the whole world to be benefited and connected. And not only in theory, not a beautiful prediction somewhere in a book, but a reality we have seen, we are living in it, and we are allowed to participate. Can you imagine we are allowed to participate in a lila of the supreme avatar? The, the Pulinda woman, they got the chance to dance with Krishna and the Rasa Lila. But we are allowed to go out and distribute the books and, the, and make temples in Mexico, in Brazil. In, so incredible. Unbelievable. And what will Krishna do next? Who knows? After seeing the elders of all the different countries, South America, some people came to the Kumbha Mela. They had to, to travel by boat for hours, then take a plane in the middle of the jungle to Leticia, then from Leticia a plane to Bogota, then from Bogota a plane all the way to Europe and to India, and reaching all the way to Prayag Raj to be with all the 
devotee says, seeing that, says, oh my goodness, Krishna's plan is into the last nook and corner of the Amazon jungles. Everyone, every teeny little village was taken in consideration when Mahaprabhu made this plan. Not only New York, Paris, London and so, forget it. Huh? The Mahaprabhu's plan is pinpointing to every soul in this world. Come and find out what is the real divine invitation of all the souls. So when we saw this there, we know that there, there is no restriction for anybody in this world to come to Lord Chaitanya's, uh, to participate in Lord Chaitanya's plan. And when we saw Srila Gopananda Bon Maharaj dancing in the middle of all of them, as the Supreme Gaudiya Vaishnava authority of this moment, then Again, we went like, mm, this is wonderful. And Madhusudan Maharaj, who was also present in that and led an ecstatic kirtan, he said, I was not going to preach. I was just trying to stay in my ashram and practice there. But after seeing this, now I understand I have to go and preach everywhere. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Questions? Commentaries? Today the devotees arrive? But late at night. Middle night. The train is supposed to reach at five o'clock if there is no delay but usually it delays four to five hours they're going to board one no they're reaching to Calcutta why they don't get out in board I don't know I'm not leaving the group I bought the tickets and the ticket goes to Calcutta goes to Calcutta I don't know if it's going to Bardaman or to any of those stations it's shorter for them they get out at Bardhavan? Depends on what trains go through not all the Not all the trains go through Bardhavan. I think this train only goes to Calcutta, otherwise Chandrakan will have told me to, to tell them to get down there. Okay. Questions? Preguntas? Adelante. How does one know on a one straight is a two straight? Can you speak loud, please? No. You spoke English? You speak English? Yeah. So speak English. Sorry. How does one know one's faith is a true, strong faith? How do you know whether your faith is strong? That question I cannot answer. The face is the face. Face is what is uh, what gives you the impulse of action. I have faith that this drink is going to be very good for me. That's why I drank it. No, so we we cannot conceive of the unknown, but we can perceive the known. So what's known to us, what is experienced by us, that is our face. The degree of the face, how strong it is, well, it will be seen by how long it will last, if it is strong. So if, if within our faith we feel very insecure, and we feel, oh my God, I think this is not my path. I have to go on looking for further for more things. Well, if that's what your heart pushes you to do, then you have to do it. There's this, that only you can judge by yourself. So how strong your face is, 
will be will be seen by your activities. For example, some people have lots of questions, some people have no questions. So if you have any doubts, doubt is also a form of mercy of the Lord. The Lord is giving us uh, the chance of reflection, of questioning ourselves about what we are doing. So these, these doubts, they should also be seen as God-given. So if I have doubts, then I must ask questions. And then when those questions are satisfactorily answered, so that my face again gets a jolt of new energy, then of course I can go on. If I don't find any answers to my questions, then it may mean that I have to ask the same questions elsewhere until somebody can answer them to me. So in this way, this is also. But that also makes me think or remember Srila Bhakti Rakakshina Maharaj was speaking once about doubt. And he said, surrender means to doubt your doubting. So you have been so much doubting, 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 but now you also want to do something. So doubt your doubting and surrender. So this is also something because we are mentally, uh, the whole the question of r r rational intelligence has a lot of doubting. Emotional intelligence may have a lot of sentimentalism, but spiritual intelligence has the guidance of Paramatma. Sri Paramatma will guide you in your spiritual intelligence. Then you are very safe. You cannot rely on your brain and relying on one's uh, sentimentality, it is also uh, a shallow, uh, it's not very secure. But in our practical life, we work with rational intelligence, sentimental inclinations, and with Paramatma guidance. Now we have to see who we're going to really submit to. Those who are atheists or rationalists or secularists, they argue, my rational intelligence does not allow me to believe this, therefore I don't practice anything. Sorry for you. Sorry for you. You think that people take a japa and start chanting Hare Krishna, you think they're crazy? Well, we think they're lucky. We think that it's a very good thing to do and many things happen. You know, chanting Hare Krishna brings about a transformation. But if you don't chant, then how can you expect that transformation? So you have to chant and you don't have to chant one day. You have to chant every day. Sometimes we think, oh, now I chanted so much, now I can chant less. It's not true. I, as far as the chanting quality and the chanting, the crying while you're chanting, all these things the scriptures describe, it is supposed to increase. Right? Chanting, preaching, longing, serving, f deep feelings, they're all supposed to increase when we practice the process in the right way. What more? Come on. Ask your question. Yes. yes when you're talking about Krishna pastime and Leelas and Chaitanyama Prabhu, it seems to be so clear because you, you, you're talking like a poetry. It's so beautiful. But in the same time, when I'm alone outside in London, Paris or whatever in the world, the sun is not the same. I mean, I have a lot of doubt and uh, my eyes, you know, and you are alone with that, and sometimes it's so, so difficult. And you're not always here to talk about poetry. So you have to do your own business alone. And this is not 
busy every day, even to chant. Sometimes you fall out, but you wake up. I mean, you stand up, but still, a human being. I'm not God or a dummy God or whatever. So even if I'm chanting for more than 30 years, still to be hard. But when I see you, it seems to be so nice and easy. So that is my question. I go up and down like a Russian. So I'm not. <coughs> so I would like to have some more, uh, uh, to be more, uh, I don't know the name, mature. Well, it just makes me think that this one person went to a spiritual master and he said, can you please help me to overcome the attachment to sweets? And the spiritual master said, not today, come back in some weeks. So some weeks later he came back and, and he gave him some instructions how to overcome his attachment to sweets sugar addiction we can also call it may i ask him why you tell me this now not before he said because i was attached to sweets myself so uh, how could how could i teach you uh, when you asked me uh, while i was attached to sweets so in this way you are up and down you say this is something the material world is always testing us on different levels and uh, as the time goes by but i have the very perfect remedy for you which i am personally tasting also so it's not only theory it's my practical experience listen to the classes of srila prabhupada every day if you're in paris london or wherever listen to those classes one hour two hour as much as you can but listen to prabhupada listen prabhupada's nectar voice and his vision is so beautiful and clear i mean many people love the classes i know people that love swami march's classes no? and sure that is great i i will not say anything against that but you know prabhupada's classes is like is like listening directly to to goloka vindavan uh, it's like the, 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 the gate of goloka is opening and somebody is talking to you so we should not miss out on that. Prabhupada is our, our star, our savior. We don't want to make him a Jesus Christ type of image because he didn't teach us that way. He said we, we all should be preaching. And that's also good. If you say such thing, oh, you're preaching nicely, you're giving me enthusiasm. Of course, and I feel, oh, thanks. At least somebody I could serve. <laughs> but really, we are... We are under the, under the extreme guidance of an extreme personality of giving us guidance for our whole life. I don't like the temple of ISKCON. It's too big for me and it's not really. But that is only one side of me. The other side in me says, wow, Srila Prabhupada established such an amazing input here and in the world that these wonderful temples are being created where people can hear and meet him get his books hear his lectures see his videos and meet his devotees so wow so if krishna needed such a building there to show to the world that we are if, if it's krishna is the supreme controller if he wanted to have this i prefer huts like this <laughs> honestly honestly but then again who can deny it that when human beings do something then it is uh, it is all a learning process it's definitely a learning process And even though some devotees, they're very humble devotees, then they're on the other side, they're making huge buildings and huge uh, memorials to the divine. It's a memorial to the divine. Every temple is a memorial to the divine. And we 
we have in the competition we are we won the first prize as the smallest temple in Mayapur. <laughs> it's easier to win the smallest temple competition <laughs> than the biggest one in Vindavan. I mean, I myself an architect by vocation. I like it. So uh, I know about construction, something, something. But anybody in the world who wants to make the most beautiful Krishna temple now, his whole attempt is frustrated after the Prem Mandir was constructed in Vendaman. That is something. Now, anybody wants to do better than that, good luck. You know? <laughs> good luck, you know. Such an unbelievable temple made. Hmm. So in this, in the same way, Krishna is just like he's. I think he, I feel sometimes like he's playing around with us, for his divine pleasure, and of course it's his good right to do so. And there's temple like uh, our Rukmini Dwarakadish Mandir in Los Angeles. No, what a temple, and it's going on now. Almost 50 years, the bells are ringing huh? in Los Angeles. Are you going there to this temple? Yeah, sure. huh? 50 years, the bells are ringing there in such a beautiful temple. Nobody can understand. Krishna's plans are just everywhere. So. Prabhupada ki jai. Any other question? Yes, Akura. Speak loud, please. Yes, in your own experience, in all these years, uh, what is your point of view about the Gaudiya Vaishnava in the aspect of having so many apparent contradictions in Tattva, Siddhanta, and uh, also? In the relationship of God brothers, we see that sometimes they quarrel, or they're not, uh, they don't have the same opinion on things that should be like uh, of main focus. So, is this some kind of human feature or or a transcendental teaching? Is this some kind of uh, uh, problem within human minds, or is this? Krishna this is definitely a tough question very tough and I'm sure for this question many different answers could come up from different sides From my own point of view, it is kind of a chintya, inconceivable. How the human mind and the divine dedication attempt of the souls lead people into so many different circumstances. The apparent contradictions, I would properly say they're preferences rather than contradictions. There's this one author in Europe, his name was Walter Eidlitz, and he wrote a book called the religion of the Sanatana Dharma, something like that, of the Indian people. And he said, India is full of contradiction regarding Shastra, regarding processes, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, Kanda Upashana Kanda, types of worship, huh? different incarnation, regional goddesses, regional saints, it's wow it's like it's it's like almost like a labyrinth or something like that 
and then he said that many of them they disauthorize each other this is right this is wrong other says this is wrong this is right like this crisscrossing but he said within the teachings of lord chaitanya everything comes into harmoniously understanding that's what he writes there from the point of view we can understand preferences so if somebody is tamasic and he has a preference i want to eat meat but i believe in the vedas I know that's not your problem, but there are people that have that problem, you know that? So what do they do? They worship Kali, and they make a Kali Puja. And still if you ask them, are you a Hindu? They will say, yes, I'm a Hindu. If you ask them, do you believe in Sanatana Dharma? So, yes, I believe in Sanatana Dharma. Do you believe in Bharata Mata? Yes, I believe in Bharata Mata. Why are you eating meat? Oh, this tendency is so strong in him. Still, this tamasic influence. He's on that level. Another one is in a Rajasic level. Another one is in a Sattvic level. The another one is in a Vishuddha Sattvic level. So, they all have different perspectives and areas. Devi Bhagavad, Srima Bhagavatam. It's some two different books, but they deal with the same subjects partially. So, all comes into perspective by Mahaprabhu's Siddhanta. Really, he's giving us the way to understand why some people want mystic powers. Like, we never talk about mystic powers. But there's one yogi who made lots of followers by saying that he would teach them how to levitate. Yeah, he got thousands of people coming to levitation courses. Then later they said they called it hopping courses. Huh? So you learned, like, while you're sitting, you hop a little bit, maybe. <laughs> so sounds funny but that's a reality you know so other people they want to go to swarga they just want to have a have a happy heavenly life so they don't listen to when the scriptures say that i to kiya pratihata and that type of instruction so in that sense from that point of view it is not really that There are the contradictions. They are just the intentions, the inclinations, and the Vedic body of scriptures is giving us different guidelines to different destinations. But they have a final conclusion. The final conclusion is Radha Dasya, wanting to become a servant of Srimad Radharani in the spiritual world. At least that's what we got from our Guru Deva thanks he never told taught us about Svarga and all this this business so that is one side of a, of an answer and another side of an answer when you're talking about conflicts I think that sometimes Krishna he plays <coughs> with the devotees to get them really enthusiastic to spread everywhere. Because we are also kind of sentimental people and we love each other so much, so we would all like to stay together always. Krishna doesn't want that. He wants his devotees everywhere. And for that reason, he's doing things which we cannot understand. They go, oh my God, what is this? Like, I personally, I love traveling preachers. I've been a traveling preacher myself. I'm still traveling a little bit. I just came yesterday from Vrindavan. So, but really, I also believe in the local guru. 
the local guru, he should live there and guide the people and should be available all the time to the people. Maybe not all the time, but at least once a month, you should be able to, to speak to your guru and share your, get your doubts removed and all that, no? That should be there, that very soft, sweet and intense relationship should be there. If it is not available at all, it's very difficult to live a spiritual life that way. So therefore we need many local spiritual leaders. But at the time when I started my traveling preaching in South America, there were no devotees in all the places. Now there are devotees and now a new, a new generation of Mahaprabhu's Leela unfolds. And that is, it's totally inconceivable. Achintya, how it really happens, what is really the meaning. Some people are very learned, but they're not kind. Some people are not very learned, but very devotional, very dedicated and full of compassion for others. So Krishna, in, in, he knows very well how to take, how to make the best use of everyone make the best use so that we can all be part of Lord Chaitanya's mission and Lord Chaitanya's mission can spread whether that ev that everybody understands everybody it seems unlikely to happen very soon we are trying Vishwa Vaishnava Raj Shabha now we have a new Unitarian form called United Nations of the Spirit. Wow, that is a unity platform, but not for high bhakti. It's a unity platform for seva to Mother Earth and for preserving a better, a better basis. But the Unitarian platform of United Nations of the Spirit is permeated or at least touched by Bhakti. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pronounced very similar directions when he said that the Lord has millions of names and anybody who chants any one of those million names, he will get the mercy, he will get deeper understanding into the spirituality. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a, a true world revolutionary for the world of faith. That what comes to my mind when I hear your question. I'm sure it's not the end of all of it. There's more things to, to look at. So, it is eight. You should take breakfast and then we should go to Nishinga Pali, to Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house. We take rickshaws and then we go to Nishinga Pali to join at least a portion of Gopinath Godiamat's beautiful Sankitan. Because Gopinath Godiamat is our very dear, dear, dear uh, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj's uh, mission and also, I went with Bodhain Maharaj to, uh, to the island of Trinidad, Tobago. And maybe we can catch Sanyasi Maharaj as we are in good room. You can call if he's there. He's there. Well, he may be out of the So, we have a call. And 
and then in the night we will revisit Vishnu. So, <clears throat> so I'm also pretty much on the move today to touch base with some important people. But going to Nishinga Pali and praying for the protection for all the devotees and all those who are on this path. Nishinga Dev is very famous for granting protection. Very merciful. Jai Sirade. So let's have the breakfast. And we, I think we should be moving out no later. No later than by 9 o'clock we should be on the gut taking the boat. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.